Kenya's gross domestic product, the GDP, is projected to decelerate substantially in 2020 due to the negative impact of the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. Economic growth projection remains highly uncertain, and the outcome will hinge on how the pandemic plays out internationally and within Kenya, along with policy actions taken to mitigate the situation. The latest World Bank Kenya Economic Update, the KEU, predicts growth of 1.5% in 2020 in the baseline scenario, with a potential downside scenario for contradiction to 1.0% if COVID-19-related disruptions in economic activity last longer. And joining us live is Monica Canary, board member for the Kenya Fashion Council. Thank you, Monica, for joining us on the news. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. And how are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. Many businesses have been affected. As a board member of the Kenya Fashion Council, how has COVID-19 impacted on in that industry? Um, it is a, um, it's a very strange situation and, of course, a very unknown uh, space for everybody. What has happened is because, like for most of us, we're in the occasions and events business. So with occasions not happening and events not happening, you'll find a lot of people will not need or will not come to us or designers for what it is that they used to do before. So this has become um, um, one of those unprecedented situations where people are like, okay, what do we do now? And, and you know, a lot of the places are closed down, no events are happening, no occasional outfits are required. And therefore everything has changed and we have been forced to make a change and to rethink you know, sit back and rethink about our situation and how to overcome this pandemic. Now, one as, of the, as, a, as in the in the in the sense of the business industry, one of the realities of COVID nineteen is the fact that people are forced to do things differently. What is new in the fashion yeah. industry now? Um, what has happened now more than ever is that first of all, people um, decided that you know the re, the um, the um, Sorry, let me, say, let me say that again. What we find is that we, we, we were all encouraged initially to sort of wear masks, masks, and, and the masks that they were talking about were the disposable masks, and that seemed enough, unaffordable for most people. And um, I think what happened initially across the board is that the designer said, look, we can come up with a, with a different um, option, and that is when we started to encourage the use of reusable masks which was met with a lot of, um, um, you know, opposition before, but after convincing and saying, look, it is affordable, it, it can be washed, it can be reused. Now that even the government took on the initiative and started to encourage, and now it is compulsory for everybody to wear a mask. So what has happened is that all the designers now got into it and are now making masks that are reusable and affordable. And that was one of the initial things that have sort of um, changed the industry for us. Then another thing is that people have now risen to the need for the PPEs. Uh, and everybody goes back and says, look, we're not making occasional outfits, but what can we make? Can we make hospital scraps? Can we make the overalls? Can we make um, things that are usable for the need that is there right now? And that is what has changed. The other thing that has changed is that people now are going online to see how can we sell our things without, um, without because our customers will not come to us. And that has changed the scene quite a lot. And it is, it has been um, a positive, it's a positive response because people are not saying well, we're doomed and it's a hopeless situation. People are looking at it like, how can we get out of this alive? And that is a very positive note just to go through the whole season. Finally, Monica, are you hopeful that the fight against COVID-19 will be won with the strategies that the Kenya government has put in place to flatten the curve? You, you know, um, <laughs> that's a very sensitive question. <laughs> but of course we have hope in our government and of course we have hope that they have, they have had the, um, the opportunity to learn from the nations that have gone before us. And because of that, we trust that whatever it is that they have set out to do, we have been in lockdown, we have had curfews, and which means the meetings that have, uh, you know, people used to have are not there anymore. Um, and you can already see the change that is happening because people are not going out as much, people are not um, uh, interacting as they used to. 
the cases of people going to hospitals have gone down. So what we find now are just the um, isolated cases of, of the corona infections, which are you can almost see how they have um, been spread. And, and because of that, we can see that if we maintain what it is that they are doing, then we will definitely flatten the curve in the sense that if you you can easily trace an infection and say, look, this this person traveled from this area to this area, interacted with these people, and they are able to test those people and then also put them under quarantine, which has helped control the spread in that sense. And because of that, it is not a widespread situation. And we're hoping that if we maintain this for, I believe, you know, I mean, I think the projection is within another two months, we will be able to see ourselves now sort of managing the situation completely. Monica Canary, thank you for joining us on the news and stay safe out there. Thank you. Thank you very much.